Thank you guys for sticking around for my last presentation. I'm going to keep it fairly short and fairly sweet. Um, with all that heavy DAC stuff, I thought would it be a nice antidote for that is some heavy DAC stuff. <laughs> so, congratulations. So we're going to talk about the new uh, is in scope function. Have you guys uh, seen this? Have you heard about this? So uh, what's really cool about this is this is designed to handle a situation such as this one uh, where you've got uh, a matrix, right? And you want to have a measure that behaves differently depending on what hierarchy you are in the matrix, right? Uh, so, for instance, right over here, I've got, and I'm going to be good and use my mouse to point. Uh, you have a situation like this where we, uh, this is a pretty dumb one, where we just have this label that says, hey, I want to know, am I looking at a year? Am I looking at a month? Am I looking at a day? Uh, I will show you in the last slide, you might want to do something like you've got a calcul uh, calculation called growth. And if, in, if you're in a year, you want to do year over year growth. If you're in a month, you want to do month over month growth. If you're in a day, you want to do over the last seven days growth, something like that. But in order to get something like that to work, you have to know where you are. So the entire idea behind this is in scope function is that it just works like this. You say is in scope and you give the column. And what it'll tell you is are you at that level or lower, right? So for here, we've got a year or lower, that measure right there, is in scope, dim dates, year, right? And if you look, sure enough, here at the year, it says, yep, we're in scope. At the month, well, we're below a year, so we're still in scope. And at the day, we're below a year, so we're still in scope. But if you go all the way down to the bottom of the grand total, it says, nope, at the grand total, we are no longer in scope. So the grand total is like the highest level, and it goes year, month, year, year, month, day, okay? So once you figure out what the year is, you gotta go figure out what the month is, same kind of idea, is in scope, and we use the month here, and it'll tell you, hey, uh, false here for 2016, because 2016 is looking at a year, not a month, but when you go to the month or lower, you get trues and trues. And lastly, if you use it for the day, uh, you can true just for the day, but not for the month or the year or the grand total as you'd expect, okay? So once you've got this working, uh, it's pretty simple to build a formula like this, like how I got this little orangey guy right here. We pop over to grain, and all you do is you check to say, hey, am I, am I at the day or lower? Then do that. If you're not, sort of move up the chain. Then you go, all right, am I at the month? If I am, go do that. If I'm at the year, then go do that. And if I'm not at any of those, you go do the grand total. And it's important to start the lowest layer and work your way back up. That's how you get the correct answer. If you do it the other way, it actually won't work very well. But as you can see, it, it's pretty darn easy. So that's interesting, but that's not actually what my presentation is about. So my presentation is about a cute little trick. Say I like cute little tricks. I see some people taking photographs. So I'm gonna leave it up for just a second, right? So, uh, hey, is this working over here in, uh, in this site, in this chart right here? Does this look about right? Is it correctly detecting if it's a year, a month, a day, or the total? Yes. Not a yes, okay. Cool, hey, how about over here? Let's see, is this a year? Yep, that's a year. Is this a day? Yep, that's a day. Is this the total? Yep, that's the total. Well, hey, wait, look, here for the month, it says it's a year. So what's the problem? I'm gonna zoom out and see if anybody can guess. I know you're all very tired, so I'm gonna make you strain your brain. Anybody got a guess? as to what broke this formula. Oh, and let me hear, let me close this. The, the January of 2016 yeah. text string. It's, it's a text string, that's part of it, part of but notice piece. this and this. Two of these things are not like the other. January. So they're both oh, January of 2016, right? But they're different columns, right. right? So if we look over here on this one, it's month alt one. And if we look over here, it's actually month alt two. And so this is a situation, I don't know if you guys run into this, I run into this all the time. We're in different parts of the report. We want to have an idea of month rendered differently because it needs to fit or sort of expand to sort of take up all the space for where it is. So in a situation like this, you will have in your calendar table, pop over here, you'll have one idea of month and it'll be expressed across many different columns, right? And so the problem is, if we come back to our formula, it's only checking month all one, okay? So what the easy dumb way that isn't my trick is, is you can have it say, well, check is in scope, alt one, or alt two, or alt three, or alt four. That's okay, but here's a cool thing that you can do instead. Um, so has everybody uh, run into this? I, I think I posted about this on a blog a little while back. If you have a sort by column, right, in a uh, chart, let's say, and you try and clear, like let's say that you've got a month label like June, and you've also got a month number like six as a sort by. If you try and clear the filter for just the label June, there will actually still be a filter for the sort by. So when you use a sort by, it sneaks its way 
into your uh, summary table, right? What that means is, if rather than checking to see if month alt one is in scope, if I instead come over here to month or lower and say, hey, don't go check to see if month alt one is in scope. Oop, <laughs> confused myself. I want to change the formula, not my little thingy up top. <laughs> rather than saying, oh, well, it's gonna, this is going to work a whole lot better if I do it this way. So don't go check to see if the month is in scope. Go check to see if the month sort is in scope. Does anybody see month sort on this chart over here? No, it's invisible. It's nowhere to be found. But because that month column is using the sort, this is going to return a true. Right? Boom. So it still works over here, even though sort is nowhere to be found. And over here, because this one uses that same sorting column, suddenly it's back working again. Pretty slick. Right? And this will lead to some strange behavior. Let me show you what that strange behavior might be. Let's come over here to the next page. right? And here our month label, 2016-01, because we've got, I don't know, computer scientists or something, and they want numbers and numbers, and that's what they want to see. Uh, do I need to sort by column for this? This will sort itself correctly. Like, 01 will become before 02, will become before 03, all the way down to you know, 10, 11, 12, right? I don't need to sort this, right? But if I do, suddenly this formula will start working again, right? Notice how it's broken right here? It says this is a year. So I come over to my model, and I take a column that sorts perfectly by itself, that has no need for a sort <laughs> column whatsoever. I go to modeling, I say sort by, I sort by the month sort, Boom, now it's working again, right? And this is really handy. If you've got a lot of formulas that are trying to check where your granularity is, and rather than having three columns that correspond a <laughs> month, you've got 19, because maybe you've got multiple languages in addition to all this stuff. As long as you map them all back to that one sort column, you can use that to solve all of these kinds of problems, okay? I will say there's one little caveat where uh, if you've got a situation like this, where each one of these uh, values corresponds to a unique month throughout time, Right? That's going to be a little different than a month of year. Right? So July is different than July 2018. Uh, in that situation, you'll tend to have two sort columns, one for these kind of global months, and another one for your sort of month of years. But two is still a whole lot better than 18 or something like that. So uh, if you don't care about any of that, let me show you uh, it in action. Right? So we come all the way over here to all 4 and we have this situation right here where we've got a growth calculation. Okay. And what it does is it uses this detection to say, hey, am I looking at a day or a month or a year? If we're looking at a day, it looks back over seven days ago and says, how much have I grown since this day last week? If I scroll down to a month, it will tell me how much have I grown since the previous month. And if I'm looking at a year, I can go find a year. If I can find a year, the hardest part of my presentation. Come on. There. It'll tell me what my growth was over the last year. And if I go later to the bottom, it'll say it, nothing grew at all because of the grand total, there is no growth. Thank you very much for your time. I know everybody wants to be, go home, but I appreciate you uh, watching this last little bit.